Shopping for humans is hard. Shopping for your dog is easy, thanks to Bark. Every month, we deliver toys and treats just for your dog. Whether it's fun, plush, or tough toys for heavy chewers, we spoil all the dogs. Subscribe now and get a free upgrade at BarkBox.com slash iHeart. This episode is brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. It's a special thing to be a member of Navy Federal because they are a member-owned, not-for-profit credit union that invests in its members with amazing rates and low fees. That's why members could earn and save more every year. Plus, they serve all branches of the armed forces, veterans, and their families. So if you're interested in becoming a member, learn more at NavyFederal.org. At Navy Federal Credit Union, our members are the mission. Insured by NCUA. Episode 129, How to Make More Money with a Side Business. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are talking about making more money. Yes. If, If you have ever done a Google search or anywhere, really, on how to make more money, you have surely seen the same 10, 20 things on every single list because they're really, they're sexy. They have affiliate programs, so they make the website money. They're easy to do, uh, but they're not super lucrative. Mm -hmm. And so today we're talking about other options to make more money, and that is with a side business. So not, you know, entrepreneur, quit your job sort of side business, but um, we'll kind of get into how you can make more money with with other options. Yeah, another approach. That aren't driving or getting groceries for someone. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. More alternatives and hopefully in this episode, help to build your confidence in your own ability to be able to do this. It is a bigger undertaking, certainly, than just picking up a side job. But it certainly can be more lucrative for that reason, too, and doesn't necessarily need to require us to quit our full-time jobs, but to add that little bit of extra income. So I'm excited about this alternative look at side hustles and more of a how to start a side business. For sure. Yeah. I was on Instagram this week, and I asked everyone, like, what is the thing you feel like you need to pay off your debt. Mm. And instantly I had like an influx of responses that are like, money, money, money. Need was, more money. Yeah, money. And I was <laughs> yes. like, I get it. I get it. So here we are doing this episode. Uh, before we get into the content though, let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Mm. First one, Frugal Friends Workbook. You've heard of this one before, and we're just going to keep bringing it back because we're so proud of it. Absolutely. Whether you're new to budgeting or trying to reach a big financial goal and need something to motivate you, you'll enjoy the Frugal Friends Workbook. It's a digital workbook with six week-long challenges that will help you save money, simplify your life, improve money conversations, and so much more. It is over 60 beautiful pages and can be completed on your own, but it is created to be gone through in pairs or in a small group because that's more fun. That's why every purchase comes with two downloads so you can split or share the cost. That's frugal. Head to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash workbook to learn more and use the code Taco Bell, all one word, Taco Bell, to get $10 off the regular price. I'm waiting for somebody to come at us and be like, you can't actually use that as your promo code. (laughs) Why wouldn't we? I know. I just always, I always think I'll get in trouble (laughs) for doing something We're not that big. Yeah. And today's episode's also brought to you by the Society Against People Taking Online Service, (laughs) or SAPTOS for short, kind of like sabotage. (laughs) Searching for a way to make money on the internet? Every article you read will, without a doubt, recommend online surveys. You'll spend hours trying to take surveys you won't qualify for and more hours taking surveys you'll get paid pennies for. And you'll learn nothing about yourself. At Saptos, we urge you, if you see online surveys as a suggestion for how to make more money, close the tab immediately. (laughs) 
you've started a coalition or this coalition this co- yes, this has coalition. begun. Right. And, and it's is sponsoring yes, us. Yes. And for sure. Thank you for your support, Society Against yeah, People Taking Online Surveys. Good cause. Yeah, it was between that and actual online surveys sponsoring, but <laughs> the ad got so negative that I was like, S- online surveys probably wouldn't sponsor yeah, this. We are against this, obviously. So here we are, episode 129. Um, episode 24 is a frugal side hustles episode. You can Way also, back in the archives. Yes. Also check out episode 85. Uh, that one's about side hustles for people short on time. And so side hustles and, and side gigs, the gig economy, they do play a, a, an important part in the make extra money ecosystem. Mm-hmm. So there's definitely, they have their own place. But there comes a time where you might be ready to graduate from side gigs and go on to making more money with a side business. And so we do want to devote a future episode to making more money like job wise. So like negotiating for raises, job hopping, promotion, stuff like that. But today is about what mindset shifts do we need to make and what strategies can we use um, to make more money outside the workplace, um, but not selling your soul uh, to an app. So <laughs> yes. that's where, that's the headspace I want you to, to be in. Um, and speaking of headspace, our first article um, is from hacktheentrepreneur.com. And it's called Entrepreneurial Mindset, How to Think Like an Entrepreneur. And it's really foundational. I have found in my entrepreneurial journey, actually having the accurate mindset. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jill? Yeah, I think that this article lays a really good foundation for what we need to be aimed at if we want to take the next step in our side hustle, side business journey. And of course, mindset is where it begins. Thoughts of whether or not I can do this Uh, absolutely sets the trajectory for whether or not we are going to take the next step in that direction. So mindset is, is a big part of this. And we hope to encourage you in this process and also give you a couple of tools from this article on what you can do, even related to your thought processes to help you feel confident to, and prepared to do this. Yeah. And I want to reiterate like over and over throughout this episode that you do not have to be like a uh, living in your mom's basement or in Silicon Valley or something. You don't have to be the next startup CEO. You don't have to uh, be great at selling or be the stereotypical entrepreneur that you think of. Mm -hmm. You can have like a, a, a low impact side business that you do on the weekends or you do some in the mornings and you can commit to it as much or as little time as your life requires um, and still have a side business. Mm -hmm. So that is kind of something we want to reiterate throughout the episode. And I do want to say at the start of this episode, we're not going to be giving a whole list of ideas of what you can do for a business. We are hoping to water and give a little bit of sunlight to possibly ideas that are already stirring inside of you, wherever your skill set already is if you've had that. And I like what this article describes. So I will absolutely direct people to this article because we're not going to go through it in its entirety. Talks about that that feeling in the pit of your stomach that a lot of us have sometimes of there's more I could be doing or I'm not utilizing this aspect of my skill set or I really have a desire to teach people how to such and such or solve this problem for so and so. And that's what we're talking about. So when you've got the rumblings of that idea, this is the episode to help you water that idea. A couple of examples, as I mentioned this, of maybe some things that that we've done. First of all, this podcast is one yeah. of those. This is this is a side How business meta. for us. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so you know, you can try to start a podcast as we've talked about in previous episodes. It is not the most lucrative for at least the first two years. Not low impact. 
years. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, my husband and I have also DJed. Uh, that's a weekend thing, so it didn't pull us from our regular daytime jobs. Uh, and that was our own business that, that we had. We also did some bartending on the side. That was our own business that we would show up to weddings and bartend, BYO, events, uh, what about for you, Jen? Any examples of side businesses? Yeah, we rented out our guest room on Airbnb. Uh, so we were able to control the pricing and um, who was there. Um, I My very first one was a t-shirt company. I designed t-shirts and yes. sold them. Um, and then publishing on Amazon. And really, my mm. entire business is just a collection of smaller businesses. <laughs> yes. So it's, and they make up one full-time income. So I feel like this is all I'm doing. It's just all under your name yeah. and your social security yes. number. It's great. Yeah. Well, now my um, employee ID number. Yeah. And we'll talk about more of this in our lightning round, but wanted to say that from the start that yeah. we're going to, we are watering and providing sunlight to you. Yes. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to the first one. There's uh, five on here. Yeah. So five, five mindset things that are going to be able to help us prepare to do this whole startup business thing. And the first one is decisiveness. Holy smokes. Couldn't agree more. I, but I don't know that I would have fully put this to words, but I'm discovering more and more how important it is to be decisive. Mm -hmm. I think even just financially, and as we are on this frugal journey, it is a really important skill and muscle to develop in ourselves. The ability to say yes or no to something, to know what we want in the future, de a decisiveness. And so they say that your ability to make a decision could make or break your future successes, even in a small business, because you will be making decisions constantly. So this is, even if you are good at making decisions, it's still something that we can regularly be intentional about improving our decisiveness and quick decision-making skills. They give an example here of practicing this in daily life, even just when ordering lunch. Like, do you want a sandwich or a salad? Just decide. Just pick <laughs> something. Look over the menu once and order that thing. And confidently. And as you continue to do that and practice that, you will become better and better at making decisions on things that might be a little bit more important than whether or not you eat a sandwich or a salad. Yeah. And that leads into the second one, which is confidence. Mm. Uh, so I feel like... I have been um, practicing at this since day one. Um, so, and the first question that is on here is like, how do you act confident when, confidently when you don't know what you're doing? <laughs> That's like the entrepreneur, like imposter syndrome of just everybody goes through that. Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know one entrepreneur that hasn't felt like they don't know what they're mm -hmm. doing. And if you do know what you're doing, you just don't know enough mm -hmm. to know that you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yes. Um, and, their, and their solution is pretend you know what you're doing. You literally have to fake it till you make it. Like, obviously, you shouldn't be in a field you know nothing about. Yeah. But if you are in a field that you are fairly knowledgeable about and you kind of, you kind of know what... You, you're doing in essence, then even when you feel like you don't know what you're doing, you just have to force it. You have to pretend. Um, because the truth is, is you probably know a little bit more than what you're giving yourself credit for. Mm -hmm. Imposter syndrome is so real. But I love what Amy Porterfield um, from Online Marketing Made Easy. She says you just have to have a 10% edge. Mm. So you just have to have 10% more knowledge than your client or 10% more um, like opportunities or assets or whatever than your customer, 10% mm -hmm. ahead of whoever you're serving. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes I found that to be even better than somebody who's leaps and bounds like expertise because the, the richer you are, the bigger you are, the more successful you are, the more out of touch you yes, are the less with attainable. the people that are far, yeah, that mm -hmm. are far behind you. And so I think it's better. And I think more people should be starting businesses with products or services that are closer to and more in touch with 
their ideal customer. Yeah. We were not podcasters. Here Absolutely we are. Absolutely not. But we started a podcast. I have, I have no, and, I'm a writer. I have no yeah. desire to talk. Yeah. And you all <laughs> listened. People. And so we kept going. <laughs> right. And here we are. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and and <laughs> when, when you need more confidence, just put on some lipstick. That's what or I did today. Or comb your hair. So, so true. If you can. If your hair's not curly. Can you comb your hair? I, That's a side tangent. Okay. Third on this list is accountability. And what this is referring to is holding yourself accountable and taking on responsibility, which really we all should be doing just as adults. Welcome to adulthood. But recognizing that everything that we do or that happens at work when we are starting our own business, whether small or large, you are responsible for. Everything that happens in your business, you are responsible. Whether it moves forward or falls flat, you are responsible. And that's not to, to be a fear, that's not to induce fear in this process, but to help us to, be, to recognize where the onus is, to be able to pick up that responsibility because it's going to be helpful as far as mindset goes in being able to move forward with the business that you're starting. Yeah, I, I get a lot of emails um, and direct messages from people who really have a lot of things that are in circumstances that are legitimately unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also seen a lot of stories, and I'm sure we all have because it's the stories of people who are in very unfortunate circumstances and come out of them and are successful. Those are the ones you hear all about. Mm -hmm. And so, and I know those people personally. Mm -hmm. And so I can't believe that people can't come out of their unfortunate circumstances. Yeah. Um, I've, I've seen too many people, and sometimes I like belittle my own circumstances, but I'm learning more and more that like the circumstances I came out of them are also legitimate. And so <laughs> to, to be somebody who has overcome things and then to also see people that have come, overcome even bigger things, like you have to believe that like your, I, I love this quote, your circumstances may not be your fault, but they are your responsibility. Yeah. And so to overcome them. I think it's also empowering too. While it's scary in some ways, it's also empowering to know you do have control. Mm -hmm. And so where we feel like, like the, this, the locus of control is inside of us. <laughs> You've talked about that yes, a lot, John. I, I know that. that's I your that concept. favorite concept. It is my favorite concept. Yes. Yeah. Then we are able to move forward in in health towards greater opportunities, and and we have an ability to when we feel as though we actually are able to influence our surroundings and make changes within our immediate circumstances, we fare better and your business is likely to fare better. Yeah, for sure. Um, the fourth one I think is the most important one on the list mm. um, and it's resilience. Yeah. Because as an entrepreneur, as a human being, you'll make mistakes and you'll fail and you'll have things, um, you'll have products or whatever that you think are going to go great that you've uh, market research, that you're just really confident in, and then they just fall flat and you don't know why. Like you will do everything right and everything will go wrong. Uh, and, but <laughs> you'll have as many times where you do nothing right and, every, or, and everything goes right. So in the time, but we always remember the times that go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. We never re remember the times we get lucky or the times we really succeed. We always remember the times where everything went wrong. Mm -hmm. And so you have to develop resilience to move past those things and uh, devalue them to the level they actually exist at. Mm -hmm. And resilience is something that we can build. I know sometimes we talk about resilience as something people are just born with, of some people thrive and other people don't, yet given the same circumstances, and, and we think it might just be 
innate or you're born with it. But the reality is, is that resilience can be built upon. We can grow our resilience factors inside of ourselves. And some of that has to do with picking ourselves back up after a failure and continuing to move forward, to allow ourselves room for failure and not allow it to completely derail us, to remind ourselves of our strengths, to engage in self-care practices, and also all of the other three things that we've just mentioned before this resilience piece. So there are ways to engage in this and and build upon it inside of ourselves. It's not as if you're just born with it. And if I don't have it, well, oh, well. Absolutely. And number five, the last on this list is humility. I like how they describe it. Humility is freedom from pride or arrogance. And it is a necessary characteristic of entrepreneurship or starting our own businesses, again, even if very small. It's the ability to be able to be coachable and to learn and to be able to fail and learn from those mistakes and do something different next time. Um, Engaging others in the process and asking them to speak into the situation and not imagining that we know everything or exactly how something should be done. And this humility is going to be a major component in seeing success in your business. Mm -hmm. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic, oracle.com slash strategic. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Yeah. So those are the mindset shifts uh, to go through. And in general, I think even if you don't want to start a side business, they are important (laughs) characteristics to have. But especially... Um, if you want to do something entrepreneurial, even if it's small, because I can name all of these every times I've needed all of these things in mine. Um, and sometimes the humility has been forced, but, um, yeah, it's, they're definitely all necessary. Mm. Uh, so where, where do we even go from here? I'll tell you where we go. Uh, so we're going to entrepreneur.com. Oh, no. perfect. Um, yes. So, uh, a funny thing is that entrepreneur.com actually has the number one result for make more money. Um, since that's what I Googled cause it's the title of the show, but I didn't go with that 
article because that one was exactly like what I described at the beginning of the show. But in the article, they had a link to this one um, called How to Make a Fortune with $100. And I thought it was just a really interesting piece. And it like gave some interesting concepts. But I think if you're not in like engulfed in entrepreneurship or not haven't started a business, like you wouldn't even think, I didn't think Mm -hmm. this way, but um, just like tips from six different really super wealthy entrepreneurs on how they would make a fortune with a hundred dollars. Yeah. And so they don't necessarily build upon each other. They're all from various individuals providing their insight on what they would do. And so the first one uh, comes from a gentleman named Gary. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. Thank you. Uh, (laughs) And he, he says to buy and flip. So, and this is so true. They mentioned even the poorest of us most likely has anywhere between 500 to maybe five grand worth of stuff sitting around in our closets, in our garages, unwanted toys, jackets, shoes, tools, you name it. And being able to uh, sell them, but also buy online and then flip those things. So he's saying that we can, I mean, for, yeah, figure out what these items are worth, purchase them at a lower amount at your yard sales or Craigslist or eBay, and then flip it mm-hmm. uh, at the same places, <laughs> eBay, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. I know Travis does this. Yes, Travis does uh, flipping. He finds a lot of things for free and like on um, Facebook Marketplace or on the side of the road, and then he'll clean it up and he'll sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, and we try to make it our goal to pay for daycare with mm. the money he makes from flipping. Uh, and, and we don't make it all the time, but a lot of the time we do make it. So that's really fun. But I know that people ha- can make a lot of money flipping uh, like clothing, especially shoes and outerwear. Hmm. If you follow teach to thrift on Instagram, she does that and, uh, she's super successful, but start with the stuff in your house. You can start with the stuff in your house yeah. and, uh, and just use it as a, a launch pad. Mm-hmm. So the second one is from Ty Lopez Um, And he says, sell or service. So the best businesses to start when you have $100 or less are either sales or service businesses because all you need is your phone and the internet. Mm -hmm. So it can be uh, consulting or selling cars or life insurance. He says, even vacuum cleaners door to door. I don't know if I would do that one. He says, because these fields hone the skills that will be valuable to you when you have more capital. So you learn how to persuade, negotiate, overcome fear, and handle rejection. So a lot of these starter businesses are really learning opportunities, too, um, if you have aspirations to one day leave your job and, and work for yourself. Yeah, I like this idea of not having much overhead, even if you are considering, well, what could be a business that I could start? Definitely one that doesn't require you to buy a brick and mortar building. Absolutely. (laughs) Next on this list is test before you invest. So if you do have this, an idea for a small business that you can start this suggestion talks about utilizing a hundred dollars that you might have to be able to test your idea or try to generate leads. So they mention buying $25 Facebook ads and seeing what kind of results you get, whether you get a positive or a negative response. And if the idea falls flat, then maybe tweak it. Or if the momentum is really good, then keep going with it. So if you're uncertain if you've got a good idea or not, this could be a really good way to test the idea and have a a low investment point on it before you turn it into something larger. Yeah, this is super popular in online business is because you can do 
a conversion ad on Facebook for as little as $5 a day. So putting something up um, that states your idea, going to like a, a web page or a landing page or something simple. And if people click on it, uh, then you know it's popular. And if they don't click on it, you know they don't want it or it's not a popular idea. So mm -hmm. it's very easy. You don't have to know a lot about Facebook ads um, to really test the service or the product that you want to serve, um, whether it's online or locally, you can really target ads um, to, to very specific people on Facebook. So it's good to see if your target market would be interested in it. And the next one is from Chris Plow. I don't know if that's how you say his name. Sure. Uh, utilize your expertise. And so I love this one. Uh, he says the simplest way to bootstrap uh, is to identify, share, consult, or teach, and then scale. So we found when we were paying off debt, it was the side hustles that utilized the expertise we already had. So for me, it was acupuncture, and I did acupuncture on the side at a rehab center. For Travis, it was he, he's an aircraft mechanic, so there are forms that you fill out after you fix something that only a mechanic can fill out. And so he would, while other mechanics were you know fixing stuff, he would fill out their forms and sign them for them. Um, so he made money doing that. So it was the things that used our expertise that got us the highest like buck, highest bang for our buck, I guess, most money per hour. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so utilize, take inventory of your skills, um, the unique positions you're in, certifications, anything that you know, and see how you can capitalize on it. Yeah, even outside of your regular day-to-day -day job, yeah. it could be something that you turn into a side business because of your area of expertise. Mm -hmm. The fifth one on this list is from Steve Griggs and reminds us to not forget service. They talk about uh, given the FedEx speed and the Ritz-Carlton service and how even the way that we approach a small business on the side and going above and beyond for those that you're providing services or um, products to can be really helpful in even getting referrals in future jobs that this because of doing a job so well, you might even be able to drum up more business with a zero marketing budget if you are going above and beyond, going the extra mile for the people that you are serving. And it doesn't cost you necessarily to be kind, <laughs> maybe emotionally, depending <laughs> on the client. Um, For sure. But that even if there's a ton of other people out there doing your idea, there could still be room for you to do that thing. And you still might have an edge on others doing it. If you are simply kind, you do good service, you're efficient, and, and that gives you that, that edge that just might be able to make the business work. Yeah. Another side to the service coin is that a lot of people struggle to raise their prices or to just price them at a point that's viable. They don't think that their time is worth that or that their service is worth that. And so adding more service or more features or more bonuses that make your service or product more appealing or quote unquote, worth more, mm -hmm. but don't necessarily take more of your time can help you charge more and more for things, um, help you validate it internally. Cause most of the time increasing our prices is an internal struggle, not external. Mm -hmm. um, but it can help you to add more service, um, to justify price increases. Mm. So like a digital product or even a physical product that you can give, um, something that you can give over and over for free that isn't giving more and more of your time. Yeah. And last on the list is from Roy McDonald. He says, it's never about the money. You could start over 6,000 businesses with a hundred dollars. Um, but he, he's like, I've, I've taken whole blocks of apartments with a hundred dollar option and traded them. And I was like, I don't know what that means. 
Um, <laughs> but it's never about the money. It's about how good the idea is. Um, and he says it's also about partners if you have those. But it's mainly about your deep knowledge and understanding of the marketplace uh, that will accelerate your business and your business venture. So it's your job to articulate the vision of the business to people so they buy it. And so your your money or your time is better spent in marketing your product or service, your business, um, than actually in the business. And so you need to be able to articulate why it's important and uh, do your market research and, and all of that. And I like it his focus on getting the right people around you Mm -hmm. in that process, that whether or not they even turn into a business partner, even getting consulting or ideas and opinions from the right people who are able to speak into those aspects can be invaluable to the beginnings of this thing. Yeah. And you know, what other beginnings are invaluable. Ooh, it's the bill, bill of the week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, guys. This is Emily from Ithaca, New York, and I'm calling with my Bill of the Week. And my Bill of the Week is light bulbs. So we decided that we were going to switch to LED light bulbs to help save on our electric bill. Um, and since we're in a no-spend challenge, I wasn't going to buy them right away. So I was price checking and seeing how much they would be at different places and found that the cheapest was probably going to be about 20 bucks um, for a 12-pack. But today we got an email from our electric company that they have a sale on light bulbs and they were $6 for a 12-pack instead of like 20 bucks. So we bought two 12-packs of light bulbs today and I was just so excited that I had to call and tell you guys that how much we saved on light bulbs and then we're going to be saving so much on our electric bill switching all of our light bulbs because we have like a million light bulbs to switch over all right thanks guys love the podcast that's so fun I love it that people think of us now when they do stuff like this (laughs) Yes. <laughs> any little money savings or like small bill is you just I just gotta call you and tell you and I am equally excited with you that you got a deal on something you'd already been looking for I think that's what always stands out to me is when you're patient for something and it's something that you need and then and then it comes along that there is a deal on that exact thing that you need it just feels like the stars align I know that's the best part it's like it comes before before you buy it and not after. Yes. That's a blessing. Yeah. And the double whammy that not only did you save money on the light bulbs, but now it's going to save you money long term on every single electric bill that you get from here on out. Well done, Emily. And well done on your no spend challenge. We just glossed over that one oh real my God, quick. You're right. Yes. She's being patient because she's on a no spend challenge. And there's so many people on no spend October right now. It's mm. so good. Well, if you want to submit your bill of the week, please, if you save money on something you think of us, visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill and leave us a bill and we will listen to it and love it. Mm. Hi, I'm Martine Hackett and I'm hosting the second season of Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition, a production from Ruby Studio in partnership with Argenix. Sharing real stories of MG, CIDP, and other autoimmune conditions, we hope to share inspiration and educate the larger community about these severe and often overlooked conditions. 
I can't fix this, I can't cure this. And, you know, I'll take my treatment day by day, but I want to try to be engaged, be involved, or be as helpful as I feel I can with the limitations I have of working full time to children. So I participate in like market research to provide information to hopefully benefit others because it's a small margin of people that have the mycenae, but then to get pregnant, it's an even more narrow margin. And you can never have too much information as an epidemiologist. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Right. (laughs) Listen to Untold Stories, Life with a Severe Autoimmune Condition on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Shopping for humans is hard. Shopping for your dog is easy, thanks to Bark. Every month, we deliver toys and treats just for your dog. They deserve to be spoiled anyway. At Bark, we send your dog a whole new collection of toys and treats made just for them every single month. Whether it's our fun plush toys from BarkBox or our ultra-tough toys from Super Chewer, we give your dog exactly what they want. For a limited time, we'll double your first box for free. To get your free upgrade, go to BarkBox.com slash iHeart. Now it's time for the lightning Lightning round. round. Uh, This is the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to talk about our side business ventures. Mm, mm, Yes, mm, because this is all we do. And we don't talk about it a lot, but even together, we don't talk about it a lot. But we're always coming up with new ways to make money. (laughs) That in itself is our our hobbies. Yeah. Yeah, how we started our side business ventures. I don't even remember what my first side business was, honestly. I feel like I've had so many. <laughs> and not all of them have have done, gone anywhere, right? Yeah, like, right, obviously, right. because I'm not doing, like, 20 different things yeah. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> I did have like plants on the side of the road at one point trying to make money (laughs) off of that. Just like anytime I see something that I'm like, this could make money. Like I just go for it. And maybe that's part of the decisiveness thing. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's always fun at least. Exactly. So, but the first one that's coming to mind is, as I mentioned earlier, Eric, my husband and I had a DJing business. And it was just something that we did on the side. And really it started because we already had the music equipment. Eric does music recording and has toured in the past. And I don't know, he just has a collection. And we would get people asking if they could borrow our speakers at different points, or he would utilize them at like his equipment at concerts, small concerts in the area. And I don't know. We might have been asked by a couple at one point if we would DJ their wedding or we saw that there either one something happened here. <laughs> <laughs> something happened where we saw that oh, we've got equipment and people want this service at an affordable rate. We already have other businesses and work that we're doing. So this could be something that we do on the side. It could be lucrative for us and still affordable for other people. And there's really no upfront startup cost Mm -hmm. because we already had the equipment. So that was, it's an example of something that we had on hand, a skill that we had in our back pockets that we figured out how can we uh, make money off of this. We we don't, I say we don't do it anymore, although literally a week yeah. and a half ago, we did DJ a wedding. I don't know. We just can't get out of it. Um, yeah, it was for good friends and we were so pleased to do it. But I would say for a couple of years, we would do a handful of weddings yeah. and it brought in some real decent cash for hanging out with people on the weekends and playing music with equipment we already had. For sure. Hopefully there were open bars at these weddings. <laughs> well, they Maybe at least better. fed us. Nice. <laughs> yes. Nice. All That's right. all I really need. Um, so my first side business was the t-shirt business. And that one taught me so much about business. Um, it, went, it went up really, really fast and crashed even faster. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Right? So I was designing t-shirts. I heard about um, merch by Amazon from the Side Hustle Show. Great podcast if you want side business ideas. So uh, I was listening to the podcast and I was like, I could design t-shirts. Mm-hmm. Um, I used Canva 
uh, which was which is free. Um, and then just uploaded them to a site that would remove the background because I wouldn't even pay Canva to get transparent backgrounds. <laughs> Did it all for free. Um, it only took my time. And they started to sell. Um, but I towed too close to the line of copyright infringement where it wasn't copyright infringement, but it was intellectual property. Um, and other people were doing it. And so I was like, if they're getting away with it, I can. Um, but my problem was that my shirt got very successful and it got mm. up, like it sold very well. And so, um, somebody else reported it and that's what happened. That was, happens a lot in when people get something that's really successful. I've seen, I mean, it's happened to me with my book too. When that got really successful, um, somebody, flagged some broken links and got my book taken down for a few days. And then magically there was another no spend challenge book up hmm. on Amazon. Hmm. So that's, that just happens. That's business. Yeah. People intentionally sabotage you. Um, and, and part of it was my fault for towing the line too close. And uh, so I was taken off of Amazon um, and uh, <laughs> I was, I got back onto Amazon, but, um, without that shirt. And I had some other very popular shirts. One was even more popular than that. And it was not copyright infringement. And then somebody went and trademarked the phrase and then reported my shirt and took it down. So, oh, yeah. So man. that was, it was totally fine when I took, put it up and then people trademarked it. So I learned so much about business mm. from that. Um, and I'm so thankful it, it provided some money to help us pay off our debt faster. Um, but I no longer sell t-shirts and I actually have one of, if you Google how to start a t-shirt business, like you'll find my article, mm -hmm. but I no longer do it. Cause I knew when to give up. Like I had already been kind of wanting to do other things. I tried to outsource the shirt design and I just, I picked designs that were, I picked a designer that just did not jive. Um, and so I spent all this money and nobody bought a single one of her designs. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I think you're making a good point, though, in this example to dot your I's and cross your T's. That, yes, while we are providing water and sunlight to all of your ideas, we... I, I also want to highlight here to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. I've got a good amount of friends actually who have some side businesses selling baked goods or food pre-prepared, which is awesome. And they're doing very well with it. But if that is, it's an example of a route that you could take, but to make sure that you know what is required of you regarding the type of kitchen that you're cooking in and, you know, providing items that are gluten-free or what, you know, whatever you're getting into that you're aware of the liability, mm -hmm. that you have insurance, that you know how to handle taxes. And of course, there are others to help with this. You don't have to be an expert on all of these things. That's part of the team approach that we talked about in mm -hmm. one of our articles earlier and getting the right people around you. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be overwhelmingly complicated. I just want to mention that caveat yeah. that it's worth doing some research as far as what will this require of me and what are the risks as I enter into this. Right. Yeah. You don't have to start with insurance uh, or, you know, a business account or getting an LLC, like mm -hmm. you don't need any of those things to have a side business. Mm -hmm. Like those are once you start, you know, making money and want to take yourself to the next level, but you should always be, uh, you should know, do trademark searches, copyright searches when like you're naming things. Um, and just be aware of like common sense. Yeah, <laughs> there you essentially. Go. Yes. And ask people about that. Yes. <laughs> if you don't have it, ask. Yeah. Uh, so most lucrative side businesses and what made it so. Honestly, I know that we joke about this podcast and how little money it's, it has <laughs> made us. <laughs> so maybe this is indicative of how little my previous side hustles have made. <laughs> but honestly, we are getting to the point where 
thank you so much to our listeners and the support that that we received through that and through sponsorships. We are beginning to make money off of this podcast. And I think partly because of the longevity that we've had with it, yeah. um, it, it, it is becoming lucrative. And I think because of the income to time ratio that's happening. We don't put a ton of time into the podcast and yet make some money off of it. So I think in that way, that's what's making it the most lucrative. I'm not spending an entire Saturday doing this like I did when I DJed. So Mm -hmm. we made a decent amount of money, but I think percentage wise, this is probably more lucrative. For sure. Yeah, it it is starting. We we thank you for supporting our sponsors and buying the workbook. All this stuff helps us uh, be able to do the podcast longer. Mm-hmm. Hell, uh, for me, my most lucrative one was is uh, self publishing. Yeah. So my book, the No Spend Challenge Guide, um, brings in around a thousand dollars a month, and then I have two other books that. Um, bring in much less, but still um, some money. So that's, I mean, great. And the only thing I can attribute it to it was it was a little bit of doing everything right. Um, so I really used self-publishing school, their their content and Chandler Bolt's book um, and just did everything that they said. And then a little bit of luck hmm. too. Um, getting picked up by the algorithm uh, in the right place at the right time because I did the same exact things for my other books and they're not nearly as successful. Um, But just getting it, you know, making your own luck, almost being in the place, being in the right place to get lucky Mm. Um, because that's kind of how business works, right? Um, It's a, it's a lot of work and a little luck, Um, but without the work, you don't get the luck. Mm -hmm. So that's well said. Yeah. Oh, I, we hope that this is going to be helpful to you. Or even if you've got that little seedling in your belly wondering, is there something more that I can do besides Rover or (laughs) Uber Eats? (laughs) Yeah. Maybe keep considering that and certainly join us in the Frugal Friends community Facebook group and tell us what is on your mind to start or a side business that you have started and how it's going. I think that we We've got a lot of people who are creative and entrepreneurial minded and really just tenacious to save money and become debt free. So, yeah, I think that this is within the vein of of our community Mm -hmm. because it takes this type of person to be able to even start a side business, too. For sure. And if you're interested in learning more about starting a side business, I have a side business starter kit, which is um, just a a workbook that you can use to get a a side business off the ground to learn more about what your perfect side business is and um, kind of some places to look to get more education about different side businesses. So frugalfriendspodcast.com slash side business to get that one. Nice. And we want to thank you all so much for listening and for your kind reviews on iTunes and Stitcher like this one. It comes from, oh gosh, I don't know, Rot, Rotsajiski. Uh, <laughs> it's called Binge Worthy and it is five That's stars. That's just a bunch of letters. Just a bunch of letters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been binge listening. Is that a thing? Of course it's a thing. Yes. To this podcast for the past few weeks, and I look forward to new episodes so much. Such a fun take on a traditionally boring topic. Star-eyed emoji. Yes. We love it when you add emojis to your reviews, (laughs) and then we can act them out to each other. Because we are in person. Because we both live in Florida now. I know. So we also want to thank our friends who share these episodes on social media. So when you share the latest episode and tag us on either Facebook or Instagram, we're going to add you to our monthly drawing. For every five tags and reviews we get, we're giving away a copy of the Frugal Friends Workbook. Mm. So keep leaving us reviews on iTunes or Stitcher. Send us the screenshot of that review to Frugal Friends Podcast at gmail.com. 
And don't forget to tag us on social. And we will see you next week. Bye. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriani. This makes me want to start another side business. Don't. It doesn't make me want to start a side business. I have a, so many things. All I know, the time, I something know. new. <laughs> All the time. I keep describing to people that the, like, the last couple of weeks have felt like whack-a-mole, only <laughs> like not the good version of whack-a-mole, where like, you get tickets and prizes at the end, just like the worst kind of whack-a-mole. But even still, you I don't get, know, I talk about this topic, and I'm just like... <gasps> you get money at the end. You get... <laughs> if, if you're not getting money at the end, Jill, it's not... A, a, a business. Oh, well, I just mean life has felt like whack-a-mole. Okay. So, yeah, some of the things that I'm whacking are giving me money, and some of them are just life things. Some of the things I'm whacking are also giving me money <laughs> in my business. I'm talking about business, Jill. I don't know how we got here. <laughs> well, I want to go to a carnival now. All right, let's go. Okay, bye. Bring home Napoleon. Destiny has brought me here. The action epic from acclaimed director Ridley Scott. What is your name? Napoleon. You are the greatest leader in the history of the world. Witness the rise. You are nothing without me. Of the legend. Starring Academy Award winner Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. I'm the first to admit when I make a mistake. I simply never do. Napoleon. Buy or rent on digital now. Rated R. Need an easy button to feed your baby? Baby Bretz's Formula Pro Advanced makes a perfectly mixed warm formula bottle automatically at the push of a button. No air bubbles, no fuss. Literally, choose your temp, select your ounces, push start, and you're done. Works with virtually all formulas and bottles. Say goodbye to the 3 a.m. feeding chaos and hello to this revolutionary stress-free solution. Raising a baby is hard enough. Let Baby Bretza make feeding a breeze. Get your Formula Pro Advanced at babybretza.com.